The Archdiocese of Chicago is a vibrant and diverse faith community. We celebrate our faith through worship, evangelization, and reaching out to the needy. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Asking me lovingly to come and follow you. Here I am. Did I hear you call my name? Here I am as you will. Good morning. This is There to Love Show. I'm Sister Lavina Francis Pamet. I'm a Franciscan Sister of the Sacred Heart, and this is my co-host. Father Adam McDonald with the Society of the Divine Word. Welcome to Dare to Love. And our guest for today is Father Rodrigo. Welcome. Thank you, Sister Lovina. Thank you, Father Adam, for inviting me. What a great day to be in the studio with you today. And uh, we promise that Father Rodrigo has a lot to share. He's even got here some, um, you know, what he will be showing us as the Marinol Missioners information um, and also a lot of um, uh, things that internationally we've been through. And more recently, Father Adam um, and I have been traveling, you in Hong Kong and I in Brazil, that just like uh, from last month, mm -hmm. we had Sister ESC here mm -hmm. to say something and I traveled with her in Brazil. But why don't you go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about your, your well, not really a vacation, but hopefully you did have a little bit of vacation at the time. Thank you, Sister Lavina, and welcome, Father Rodrigo. It is good to be here and good to welcome everyone for this uh, wonderful program. We're so honored to have you with us, as you know, each month we have a whole hour to talk about things related to vocational awareness and discernment and so thank you for joining us and thank you for inviting me to share that yes recently I traveled all the way to Hong Kong for the ordination as priest of a member of my Divine Word community. Now this new priest uh, was formed and trained here in Chicago, lived at our formation house here in Hyde Park for the last uh, six years. And so I got to represent our membership here in the United States by traveling to Hong Kong, being there for his priesthood ordination and also for his first Thanksgiving Mass. The ordination and the first Mass were held at the very cathedral in the heart of Hong Kong in uh, Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. And believe it or not, Sister Lavina, there were four men ordained at the same time. Two wow. divine word priests, including Father Andrew, my colleague, mm -hmm. and two yeah. uh, transitional deacons who will be ordained priests next mm -hmm. year. So just a fantastic experience. Now, of course, I don't speak any Cantonese, but everything was translated into English so I could understand. And being uh, a former missionary from the Philippines myself, and you being from the Philippines, I was delighted to know there are many Filipinos living in Hong Kong. So whenever I got lost, I just looked around for the nearest <laughs> Filipino and they guided me on my way and just had an amazing, amazing experience. It had been a while since I'd flown across the Pacific, forgot what those long flights are like, but thanks to Air Canada, got safely through Chicago to Vancouver and onward to Hong Kong. So right. pretty amazing experience. Yes, and it's it's so exciting. Uh, I have been to Hong Kong only once, and that was a hundred years ago. Well, actually, it's it's in the 1990s, I think, uh, BC before convent. But <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I uh, had traveled uh, back then because I'm from the Philippines, and so when I when I uh, do my uh, vacation, um, I would sometimes like you know take some of these side trips, and mm -hmm. that's what I did. And it was really like just for a weekend, and mm -hmm. um, and, and so that was fun. Mm -hmm. However, uh, my trip I was three weeks in Brazil. That was that was quite interesting because it, it was so hot uh, that I I just felt like what I did. <laughs> was eat five times a day and uh, and then you know after lunch which is the almoso uh, you would have the reposo which is the rest mm -hmm. and and so it, it's pretty much like wait if I if I do my diary did I just eat five times a day and rest <laughs> so what did I do in between now seriously though um, what I did enjoy is that I was able to get to know uh, my sisters uh, before before uh, all the rest of all the other events happened mm -hmm. and the main reason that um, the North American sisters were there is because uh, it, it was the anniversary the 60th anniversary celebration 
of uh, our presence in Brazil. So 60 years ago, our sisters from North America uh, went to found a community, um, not to add to their numbers per se, but it really is in the obedience to uh, the Pope's um, request that religious communities, and in fact, in, an invitation to all the faithful to go and be missioned. And so we chose Brazil and the Amazon area, which is the north eastern part of Brazil, which is really a huge country, um, that's where the need was. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I visited, I was able to go to some of the base communities in which either their um, parishes have not really been established, so they're in a way missioned mm -hmm. and connected to a bigger parish. Um, and then the other thing is because I had been learning uh, Portuguese, um, I basically was, was learning more Spanish than Portuguese before, but Portuguese is quite different, especially mm -hmm. Brazilian Portuguese. And so I was able to learn so much more because I understood the language and nothing like the Chinese or Cantonese <laughs> that you were trying to learn, but at least I was able to understand what was right. going on. Um, it's Wonderful. always very humbling, um, other than the five times a meal, but... <laughs> They're mm -hmm. so, so hospitable and so welcoming. And um, I also got a chance to celebrate my 25th uh, anniversary uh, jubilee once more. And so um, that was fun. And, and people were very, very welcoming. And I got um, a lot of blessing. The mass was successful. Um, I got to sing in English, too, because they wanted to say to honor our sisters, why don't you sing in English? Wonderful. So the song that I picked was uh, Miracle of Grace by Curtis Stephan. So. Nice. Anywho. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, you, you talk about eating several times a day. Well, if you know anything about Hong Kong, you know it's also known as a food spot. And so we ate a lot. But the challenge was I was only there for four days. Um, and it took me three days to get there and back. And so it was just a very short trip. But, you know, we had a little snafu with the airline. They didn't have enough crew to fly us across the Pacific. So we lost the night in Vancouver. Thanks to Air Canada, we were put up in the hotel. But it just meant that my trip was all the more compact. But even in those short hours, getting to visit our missionaries who serve there, uh, they also also serve on mainland China, mm -hmm. Taiwan, and Macau. And so we have a China province for our community. And it's really um. going back to the roots of the Society of the Divine Word. China was the first country that St. Arnold Jansen, our founder, sent our missionaries to. And to have a presence in mainland China, Father Andrew from mainland China, now missioned to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and therefore being ordained there, his parents and siblings being able to come for the ordination, it was just fantastic. The food was a bonus, but just being together in that fellowship was so amazing to bond with our missionaries. So thanks be to God for our safe return yes. and for all those who prayed for us and our missionary adventures. And so wonderful that you got to continue celebrating your 25 years in religious life, Sister Lavina. So welcome back to both of us. Right, and actually October 1st, um, and actually this whole week, I feel like I'm celebrating it again um, because St. Teresa of Lisieux was the feast for October 1st that I I was re well received officially in, into the community. So, Wonderful. so it goes on. Wonderful. But, yeah. And we will celebrate during October as well because we know this month is Respect Life Month. It's also the month of the Most Holy Rosary. And significantly, Father Rodrigo and I discovered on the way here this morning, we both live in Hyde Park about a mile apart. And yes, there's even traffic going a mile. I was surprised at how long it took for me to pick Father up. But we discovered that two very special people came into the world during the month of October. Don't know who that could be, but hmm. anyway, so we will look forward to celebrating the gift of life this month as well. So good things are happening mm, in October. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so without uh, further ado, welcome, Father Rodrigo. And we will, um, your, your story really is what fascinates me. And our, our theme pretty much, um, aside looking at uh, vocation and what does it mean to be a missionary priest, or to be a missionary in essence, but in your particular case, how did you um, start thinking about it? There must have been some high points in your life, but there were also some uh, high points, should I say? because you were up in the air when when uh, things were happening with you. And without further ado, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, who you are, uh, you're with, with the Marinol, what does that mean, what's your current role, um, also where you're coming from, because in a way you're coming back to Chicago to live here. Yes. Well, Father Rodrigo, 
I'm a Latin boy, born and raised in Guatemala. And so my family moved to the U.S. in 99. Mm. And um, I wanted to continue education. I wanted to continue my degree. So I was enrolled in law school in Guatemala. And we moved. The embassy sent our papers, so we got residence. And we moved to Florida, where the rest of my family lived. And my cousin, who was in the Army, says, why don't you join the Army? They'll pay for your education. And so he convinced me to go see the recruiter. And the recruiter next to the Army was the Navy, the Marines, and the Air Force. So I went to four of them. And the one that had the better package was the Air Force, <laughs> education <laughs> package. And so I ended up joining the Air Force. I always had a foot in and a foot out of the church, mm -hmm. if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. One foot in, one foot out. My vocation, mm, well, before I go into my vocation, uh, I was ordained in 2011 with the Marino Fathers and Brothers, okay? And I was sent to Asia. I did, a, my first assignment was Nepal mm -hmm. at the Assumption Cathedral in Kathmandu. So wow. kudos to wow. all of you who are watching the show, especially greetings to all of the hikers who go to Mount Everest. Uh, wow. I got a lot of stories about that. And then I transferred to Taiwan to learn my Mandarin at, uh, Ren University, which is run by the SBDs and the Jesuits in uh, Taipei. Mm -hmm. After a two-year language program, I moved to mainland. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was brought back to the United States in 2019 to join the vocation uh, group, vocation ministry team in, of Marinol. And in 2020, they've made me vocation director, mm -hmm. and I moved to Houston. So I was there for almost two and a half years and that's the experience I come to in, in, in from uh, into Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, two and a half good years in Houston working as vocation director, getting to know the diocese. And we went to World Youth Day last year f uh, in Portugal as part of, as a chaplain mm -hmm. for the diocese. So I come to Chicago to a place that uh, saw me uh, graduated, that saw me flourish, and so I'm very grateful to God to return mm -hmm. and a quite different Chicago from 13 years ago that I'm looking forward to explore and to venture in. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh, definitely, uh, you know, with, with your experience, I, I think you will enjoy it here. It, it, you, I, I really think you will. And you haven't even met um, the members of Kaaba. I'm looking at the screen right now and you have a story also that involves uh, the current cardinal, cardinal of Chicago, um, and he knew him as uh, Bishop Supich. Yes, yeah, so I was stationed in Ellsworth Air Force Base, South Dakota, mm -hmm. um, and it happened that um, my vocation starts in 9-11, basically. Uh, and so I will go back to my vocation later, but um, how I met the bishop, so I left the Air Force. I mm -hmm. joined the Diocese of Rapid City as a seminarian for one year. Mm -hmm. And Bishop Supich by then was the bishop of Rapid City. So he sent me to Winona, Minnesota, uh, to Immaculate Heart of Mary Seminary uh. and St. Mary's uh, Minor Seminary. And uh, so that's where I studied my philosophy and a year of Latin. And um, so of course, I have a relationship with him. He's, he sponsored my first year of study. Wow. And later on, you will find out how he is part of a big decision in my life to transfer from diocesan to mission. Mm -hmm. Should I say it now or later? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can, you can save it. Okay, it, good. it seems like, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the, the other thing that I was intrigued with your story, uh, well, first of all, like a real side note, Winona, Minnesota is very important to me because that's where I spent my novitiate oh, um, and uh, I just fell in love with that town. So you're lucky to have been assigned there. So, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, wherever you want to start in terms of if you want to start from the beginning, mm. um, you can go ahead. So, yeah. So I joined the Air Force, 99, did basic training in Lackland Air Force Base technical school in Lackland Air Force Base, so you are, you are, you're given a job based on your scores, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and so after about six, seven months in Lackland Air Force Base, I was sent to Rapid City, Ellsworth Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. 
And um, life was good. I enrolled in uh, college, so I was working during the days, studying at night. I was paying 25% uh, of my college, 75% was paid by the Air Force. Later on, mm -hmm. the Air Force covered 100%, and I believe that's the rule now. Mm -hmm. One foot in the church, <laughs> one foot outside. Uh, and all of a sudden, 9-11 comes, right? So, uh, Where were you at that time? I was at Air Force Air Force Base. Oh, my. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so uh, blessings to all of you who mm, have family related to that event. Mm, our heart goes to uh, you and everyone whose legacy is so important for mm -hmm. this country, mm, especially also the rescue people, huh? nurses, police department, mm -hmm. fire department. And I found myself inside a C-141 airplane. A C-141 mm -hmm. is half cargo, half personnel. Oh. So we're flying from Norfolk Air for, uh, Air, Naval, Air, Naval Air Station mm -hmm. to uh, the Middle East, and the plane looked like the one you're seeing on the screen. Mm. All of us were anxious. All of us were nervous. I was thinking of my grandmother who had Alzheimer's, and so how will she do? Mm. Thinking of my parents, I had to stop everything basically to go to this deployment. And this is a very tense time in the United States. Mm. So, uh, and I looked to my left and there was someone reading. And I go, dude, what are you reading? <laughs> right? When all of us are just wondering, mm. where is this yeah. plane landing? How mm. long is the war going yeah. to last? All of those questions. Kept looking at him and I spotted his cross. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, so he's a chaplain. Mm. He, he's not only a soldier, he's a chaplain. And that book he had wasn't a book, it was the Bible. So he's praying. That was the first sign that I got above 30,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And he elicited peace. There was something about him that none of us had. And I looked at him, I said, wow, he is enjoying the moment and believe me the plane shakes and you have to put your earplugs and all yeah. of that right uh, we're looking at each other so the cargo is in the middle cockpit to the right tail to the left it's not a normal plane it's a military plane and so there he was just at a very he was silent at peace let the plane lands navy personnel goes to the base army marines air force we went to our base Sunday comes around, I want to go to Mass, and it was a small tent, I remember. I opened the door, and it was him, the same chaplain. So I'm saying, who's following who? Uh, <laughs> we became good friends, and he gave me one of these books, which is sort of like a, a compendium of prayer for soldiers. Saint Michael the Archangel defend us in battle. So you have a lot of prayers, including Saint Francis of Assisi, the one from Saint Ignatius of Loyola, mm -hmm. wonderful prayers, and my Bible. And so we started the RCIA program there in mm -hmm. the desert. And the more I learned about Jesus of Nazareth, the more intrigued I became. There was something powerful when I read scripture. I can understand, and I, it's difficult to explain. There was something sacred, reading his miracles, the way he called people, the way he treated women, the way he engaged in life, the way he proclaimed salvation, and the way he described God in a very loving way. Desert time, one foot in, one foot out, and I was probably merging more into the one foot or, or uh, full feet into, into the church. and. For the first time, I started journaling. Mm -hmm. And the more I journaled too, I realized, wait a minute, there's something here that I need to pay attention to. That is really uh, very noteworthy. And I hope our listeners and um, people who are watching this um, will um, be able to recognize that special uh, moment and those times of getting to know our Lord. Um, this is probably a good time uh, for us to go into a, a quick break. Uh, Mike will lead us into, Mike May is our person uh, from whom we look to, to kind of organize us. Uh, thank you, Father Rodrigo. We'll be right back. Here I am, did I hear you call my name? I am 
ready to begin. Here I am, I come to follow you. I've traveled long and far to follow you. I am a seminarian. The church needs compassionate and well-trained priests to help guide each of us through life. What inspires me, what draws me always to the priesthood is continue to see priests be a beacon of hope for other people. You can play a part in the education of these young men as they prepare for a life of service to others. I want to be that beacon of hope too, and it's, it sets my heart on fire. To support our seminarians, make your gift at archchicago.org slash seminarianfund or call 312-534-7959. Have you ever felt the call to be a priest or a brother? We are the Marinol Fathers and Brothers. Good morning, I am Father Rodrigo, the Vocation Director, founded by Bishop James Anthony Walls and Father Frederick Price. We have been an outstanding missionary society with an extensive missionary past, a promising missionary future, and you can be a part of it. We work in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, and with your gifts, we can do much more. I invite you to check us out, the MarinolSociety.org. Be there, be a missioner, be married all. God bless you. Show. Again, I'm Father Adam McDonald from the Society of the Divine Word, together with my co-host, Sister Lovina, Franciscan Sister of the Sacred Heart. And we're so privileged to begin this new month, the month of October, uh, the month dedicated to the Rosary, the month of dedicated to respect for life, with our special guest, Father Rodrigo from the Marino Fathers and Brothers. You've now heard a little bit of Father's uh, story of his vocation. We wanted to kind of go a little bit deeper into that story. Father Rodrigo, as we were sharing, you were using this terminology a couple of times that I have a feeling was probably resonating with a number of people watching or listening to this broadcast. When you talked about that period in your life where you had one foot in the church and one foot out, and people might be thinking, well, how could you do both at the same time? I was wondering if you'd care to share a little bit more about that time in your life and how that played into your coming so fully into the church that you would be here today as a Mary Noel Father. Thank you. The one foot out uh, represents the foot that is involved in life, the, vo the, the foot that is involved in work, in perhaps dating, in planning your future. Uh, and the one foot in is that commitment you give to the church, that foot that is dedicated, that wants to pray, that wants to say yes. But so after accompanying a lot of young people, I feel that, well, what are you waiting to bring both in mm -hmm. uh -huh. and both out? Because that's where Jesus sends us back to the world. So you cannot serve two masters, Jesus says. Well, and it's okay to have one foot in, one foot outside at some point. But the church, especially Pope Francis, is inviting us to, well, bring both in the church. Because there's a space for you. Your voice counts. You're special. We want to hear you. No wonder why the synod is happening. And so for all, uh, for the sake of young people, I think this is a good way to encourage them to first take a pulse and say, am I out or am I in halfway, half through? What am I waiting to say mm -hmm. to, be, to commit? Mm -hmm. And I think I, I felt that that was the part of me that uh, was lacking. Why am I doing with one foot out? I need to be fully in. 
Thank you for sharing that. Uh, as you were talking, I was thinking about, and Sister Labina is going to laugh. I'm already laughing as I say it. I was thinking of the hokey pokey. <laughs> you put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, and you shake it all about. <laughs> but, you know, we laugh about it, but it's so true. I mean, we live our lives as we journey with each other in our own discernment of, you know, where am I called to go with my gifts and, and these desires I have and, and the needs of the world. Um, sometimes we, we want to do everything all at once. Um, that brings to mind the film, Everything Everywhere All at Once. We've talked about that mm -hmm. before, but at some point kind of bringing that focus of how do we bring the pieces together mm -hmm. and make that sort of unconditional, absolute yes commitment mm -hmm. to a person, a congregation, a mission, a project, a vocation, whether it be in married life, single life, or committed, consecrated life as mm -hmm. a priest, sister, a deacon, that kind of thing. And so I think, again, so many people can relate to that. So thank you for sharing with that. And it's good to laugh a little bit. You know, yes. I haven't done the hokey pokey in years, <laughs> but it's coming to mind as we think about, you know, having one foot in one foot out and bringing everything together. So I'd love to hear more as well about how this connection you had with then Bishop Supich, now Cardinal Supich here in Chicago, and that, that move, as you said, from uh, sort of being father to being missioner, you know, from the seminary to, to, to mission. Would you share more about what was happening at your point in that journey that led you from the diocesan seminary to formation for life as a Marino father? Bringing in the title, Jesus Chooses, we simply answer, we simply say yes. So Jesus will choose, we say yes. Mm -hmm. And so I felt that uh, in that deployment, I discovered something that I didn't actualize before. Uh, Father Dave, who was the chaplain, says, you know, have you ever thought of a vocation? Have you ever thought of both of your feet in, fully in? And that was the moment I started journaling and I realized that, you know, the more I'm journaling, I'm discovering uh, there is this very sacred writing in me that wants to keep going. And the more I wrote about Jesus, I, for the first time, opened my life to His plans. It was only me, my plans. And then the transition happened. Well, God, do you have something for me that I don't know? And what is it? Can you tell me? And Father Dave kept saying, pray about it. Just pray about it. He wasn't pushy. He accompanied me. He listened. And my time to come back to the United States arrived. He wrote a letter to the bishop, Bishop Supich, saying Rodrigo is ready for confirmation. And at the bottom of the note, he wrote, and Rodrigo wants to be a priest. <laughs> he didn't show me that. He sealed it, put it in an envelope. And I went back to Rapid, gave it to another chaplain, Father Dave, who was the chaplain at Ellsworth Air Force Base. And I remember he got up and says, let me give you a hug. And I said, Padre, it's only, it's only confirmation, you know. He's like, no, no, look, you want to be a priest. <laughs> Everything stopped. Oh, boy. Absolutely. Everything stopped. And I trusted him. And why would he write that? So, young people, this is for you. People will notice gifts in us that we don't see. Exactly. And you have to trust. Jesus chooses, we answer. So I trusted. And I said, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. Not really knowing what was ahead, but that's fine. We trust. And then things just fell into place, mm. right? It's good to just to acknowledge that things will fall into place. So uh, I joined the diocese, Bishop Supich accepted me in Rapid City, sent me to Winona, and one weekend the rector uh, closed the seminary, I think it was near Thanksgiving, he said, guys, go and visit your family. So from uh, Winona to Florida, long ways, and as a seminarian I was sort of saving cash for big opportunities, special opportunities. So one seminarian says, why don't you come to Indiana to spend Thanksgiving with my cousin? So we did. We drove, Sunday Mass came around, went to Our Lady of Guadalupe Parish, and there it was, a marinal priest, Father ah. Pete Chabot, now in Cincinnati doing a church date, and he spoke about the missions in Bolivia. The word mission intrigued me, it was fascinating. And the way he described his engagement with people, the Aymara people in Bolivia, and uh, the Quechua language, wow. And so 
Mm, I remember he invited everyone for lunch afterwards at the activity center, sandwiches, beverages, and when you're a seminarian, when they say free lunch, <laughs> come on, right? <laughs> Bam. All in. So All in. Right. All in. <laughs> Both feet. <Sign> uh, <laughs> and so he talked more about his mission, and I came out of that lunch with a lot of spiritual blessings, a lot of mustard seeds, and I said, i like to explore more. So he gave me like an envelope, and you could write your name, address. Mm -hmm. I fill it out. And on my birthday, which is coming up, on my birthday, I remember that letter arrived. And tempting to, you know, to take a letter and says, is this one of those credit card applications? <laughs> but I decide, ah, let's open it. And he was inviting me to the mother house of the Marinol Fathers and Brothers in New York. New York. Mm -hmm. I went, and I think that was the cherry of the pie mm. that sealed it. To hear the stories of these missionaries who were in Asia, Africa, Latin America, engaging cultures, foreign languages, serv serv serving Christ, uh, serving the poor, learning themselves. I thought, that's exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I came back to Rapid, and I tell you, the walls here, I hope these walls are hearing too, because then the rumors went to Bishop Supic's office, and he came to <laughs> Winona to meet with the seminarians one-on-one. -on -one. And it was my time, uh, when it came to my time, um, I, I still remember the day, he, in the moment, he, he, we didn't sit. He says, Rodrigo, by the way, what, what is this I hear that you want to join Marino? <laughs> and so he sat, I sat, and I didn't say anything. And he said, you know, I went to China, and I know the work that Marinol does. So similar to you, Father Adam, mm -hmm. our founders mm -hmm. chose China mm -hmm. as our first mission. Mm -hmm. So my answer, my prayer was answered. He's, he, Bishop Supic is telling me, uh, yes, that's a vocation I appreciate, and he was very respectful of it. He says, finish your year, and if that's your call, I will transfer you. And, and, and so uh, years later, I came back, and he gave me audience. Pretty cool to have an audience with a cardinal mm -hmm. now of Chicago, and that's the picture uh, you'll see later, or have you, you, you've probably seen it in this show already. And I said, you remember me? Things come around, huh? It's a loop. You allow me to... Uh, transferred to Marinol, and you mentioned China, and that's where I served. Mm -hmm. uh, so very appreciative of, of him, of mm -hmm. his uh, vision uh, to, to allow someone like me to transfer and be a Marinol father. So, mm -hmm. I think if Mother Cabrini were here right now, I'm speaking to represent Sister Joan McGlinchey, mm -hmm. who is a missionary um, mm -hmm. of the Sacred Heart, uh, founded by Mother Cabrini. I, I don't know if you've seen the show yet, yes, but I have. Um, you know she, her her one dearest wish was to go to China, and I, eventually they did. But for some reason, she kept being sent here in America, in the United States. So how, you know, Christ chooses, you simply answer, and mm -hmm. she answered several times. So mm -hmm. thinking of missionaries, and um, I, I guess in celebration of mission work, mm -hmm. now we could easily glorify it. So I just mm. want to ask, and this is, I have two missionaries <laughs> right here with me. So is it all the glory or because some we you know some young people might think oh that's what I want to do you know go international mm -hmm. go to Hong Kong Brazil go to China Nepal but what's the catch or maybe I should say what's the reality of it because it's not for everyone and I have to say we want people to be knocking on our doors mm -hmm. to join us but it really is not for everyone and I'm not saying mm -hmm. oh you're not good enough it's not about that at all mm -hmm. Again, it's God who calls. But for a missionary, it is different. Some people are called to the ora et labora, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the more uh, consistent type of, of mm -hmm. um, living the life, mm -hmm. or someone who is active right there in their neighborhood, and family is very important to them. They mm -hmm. want to be close to their family, or they want to... Uh, they have the capability of learning languages and going to other places and um, living the life with uh, people that you were not raised with, with mm -hmm. very different cultures. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah, what do you think? that's I'm I'm I'll take a stab at it as well, Father Rodrigo, if I could. I really appreciate your insight, Sister Lavina, and giving the chance to talk as missionaries because I think the catch for me is to say that there's a fascination on the part of many young people on going on a mission trip or having a mission experience, and that's wonderful. You can do much good by going on a short-term experience to serve immediate needs. And I think even as we speak right now as this program airs, people are doing that, helping people with relief from Hurricane Helene in many parts of our own country, being on mission to serve the needs of others. The difference is that we are looking for people who are willing to commit to a mission lifestyle. We're not just going, you know, sort of as tourists or sightseers or just to make a, an immediate impact, but really to invest our lives and learning the language and the culture of the people so as to know their needs and then be about discussing with the people what needs to happen in this place so that Christ can be more visible, so that Christ's love can be felt among the people, so that God's kingdom can become more of a reality. And so often I think Father Rodrigo would agree, we'd recommend that people go on a mission experience you know, and get that sense of what it's like because to have that experience could lead you to discovering whether you are called to leave behind what is familiar, those whom you love, not that we forget about them, not that we don't have social media to keep in touch with them, but in terms of that daily living, your focus becomes the people you're missioned to serve among. And then, as you say, learning the language and the culture. And so there is there is sacrifice involved, mm -hmm. and there is going beyond the boundaries of our own comfort zone and sometimes our own imagination, going to places we didn't know we would be called <laughs> to serve. So that's kind of my take on it. Father Rodrigo, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your perspective as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with you. And adding to what you said, mm, that intercultural element, mm. uh, it's important for someone who has never traveled abroad. So I would recommend taking a come and see in any of our uh, communities, with any of our communities. First, learn the charism of who we are. And then the next step would be to find out when is uh, an opening to go abroad for a short term, okay, or a Holy Week retreat. We, the Merrill Fathers and Brothers, had, had it in El Salvador this past uh, mm -hmm. March. And we were right there at the tomb ah. of uh, Saint Oscar Romero, oh, wow. mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a, a wonderful experience that highlighted uh, the holiness of this person who was a uh, a martyr and a prophet in his own time. Mm -hmm. mm, so I would recommend uh, a come and see, and then uh, invest more in where would you like to serve or what area of the world are you interested. Mm -hmm. And the more you find out, I think the more um, push you will have an initiative to take the next step, mm -hmm. which is traveling and, and joining uh, one of these short terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father, Father Rodrigo, for sharing that perspective. And as always, we'd like to remind people that we are Roman Catholics, and so we are missionary by virtue of our baptism. Our faith is given mm -hmm. to us so that we can give it away, so that we can share it and invite others to know the Lord. So whether you're going far overseas or staying in your own neighborhood, your family, we are all called to be missionary witnesses of Christ. This is a really good time to take a break, so we will do that now. We invite you to stay with us because we've still got some more time to learn from and share with Father Rodrigo. See you in a few minutes. Here I am as you will Speak my God, I am ready to begin Here I am, I come to follow you always say how can you spend your day with three-year-olds seeing the changes that they go through and just the journey and how they grow this is a very rewarding job even though at the end of the day we're not the highest paid people on earth and when I have a parent contact me and say my child loves school that to me I'm setting that foundation for their love of learning because really you are changing lives you are molding lives shape the next generation of leaders teach Apply today at artchicago.org schooljobs. 
Catholic Charities Loss Program was created more than 40 years ago to help survivors of suicide wherever they are in the grieving process. This nationally recognized program continues to offer a safe, non-judgmental environment where survivors of suicide can find community, direction, and resources for healing after suffering the devastating loss of a loved one. Online and in-person services are available for individuals, couples, children, and families of all faith traditions. To learn more, call 312-655-7283 or email loss at catholiccharities.net. Don't suffer alone. We are here to offer loving outreach to survivors of suicide. Contact Catholic Charities today. A stranger and a pilgrim in this world Sometimes I wonder what this journey will bring And you guide me faithfully So welcome back everyone once again. I'm Father Adam McDonald from the Society of the Divine Word together with my co-host Sister Lovina, Franciscan Hi. Sister of the Sacred Heart. And we welcome you back to the Dare to Love show as we continue to enjoy the presence of our guest, Father Rodrigo from the Mary Knoll Fathers and Brothers who's been sharing with us his unique vocation story of how Christ chose him and how he simply said yes according to the theme of our program. And so to think of how God calls us very generally, collectively, we are all called to be witnesses of Christ and yet that call comes through very specific specific circumstances, relationships, and events in our lives. So Father Rodrigo, if we could, uh, in the time we have left, uh, focus in a little bit more about, uh, you've told us the story up to now of how you transitioned from one foot in, one foot out, to more fully into the church, all of your whole self, and then your deployment leading you to discover more richly the faith, and then transitioning to the seminary, then from the diocese, and then to the Marian Old Fathers. You mentioned being ordained since 2011, so nearly 13 years a priest. Could you share with us a little bit about where your missionary journey has taken you around the world? Uh, you, you shared briefly about that in the introduction. Maybe share a little bit more about where you've been on mission. The first assignment is always an exciting part of a missioner. Where will I go? Mm -hmm. Where will I serve? One of our marinal greatest missionaries, Bishop James Edward Walsh from Cumberland, Maryland wrote, a missioner goes where he is needed but not wanted and stays until he or she is wanted but not needed. Mm -hmm. So I thought, where am, where am I needed? You know, uh, where am I wanted? Uh, not wanted by, you know. <laughs> the, well, That's important. <laughs> right. Uh, and so it's a conversation with our superiors and a lot of the sermon too. And the regions are informed that a new priest is going to be ordained. Uh, let's talk about his assignment. So I was blessed to be assigned to Asia and to Nepal, to the cathedral. And in this is 2011, the centennial year of Marinol. So I particularly asked to be assigned uh, to a parish so I could have that parochial experience. And the bishop who came to my ordination, Bishop Sharma, rest in peace, he said, Father Rodrigo, we're gonna assign you to the cathedral parish, cathedral parish. So uh, wonderful assignment uh, talking about uh, learning to live with very minimal, so no electricity during wow. the day, water was scarce. Um, a lot of the comfort that we have here, well, no. So I thought, wow, this is important for me to uh, understand and just to just live with it, you know, just go through the motions, right? Winter, spring, summer, uh, all of the four seasons. And, and that's when also you realize, I can do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I not only survive but thrive in a very uh, difficult environment that afterwards the people show you that it is not so difficult when you're entering into that simple, that more sacred mode of appreciating, thanking God for the moment. People went to buy their uh, goods for the day, so the meat and the vegetables for the day, mm -hmm. not tomorrow. Jesus says focus on today and that's mm -hmm. what I learned from the Nepali people. Two wonderful years in Nepal, and then my superior, 
And this is a funny story because when superiors visit you, either you're in trouble <laughs> or it's for a good thing. So my superior <laughs> called me and says, I want to visit you. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. So I said, come. So he flew from Hong Kong and um, he informed me, oh, well, I had to choose a restaurant. We went out and, uh, and then afterwards he says, I was, I was sort of anxious. When is he opening the can of worms? Tell me. <laughs> And he says, uh, I want you to move to Taiwan and learn Mandarin. And with all due respect, I said, no. And the, a good conversation started. And uh, long story short, he says, uh, I'll give you the weekend to think about it. Well, I took that weekend and I, I was hoping more. <laughs> and then I asked, you know, spirit, my spiritual director, uh, director, friends that I trusted, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And there was this Mm, positive, a, a positive vibe about it. I, I, where there is peace, right, go for it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Where there is, uh, uh, where there are indicators that this is life-giving, go for that. So again, I trusted. And a wonderful experience in Taiwan, learning uh, the Chinese characters, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and I was 33 when I was learning, and my uh, professor says, look, your classmates are in their teens and early 20s. So you're cutting the edge here. So I invite you to take it slow and you can repeat course one if you want, course two. And I did course one, two and three, two times. And mm. great because, mm. you know, uh, unless you're really smart uh, and intelligent, Chinese characters take a long time. And I learned the way of associating stories with the characters. Mm -hmm. And then I was asked to uh, put all of that in practice in mainland. And I was blessed to be assigned in the northeast of China where Merino uh, built a parish in the province of um, Liaoning in the city of Dalian. Mm -hmm. And I brought two pictures. One is a black and white where our founder uh, is in the middle of this uh, big crowd and behind him is the church, the church of Our Lady of the Star of the Sea. And um, I found that picture in our archives and I told the folks at Mass, you wanna make history? Yes, you, wanna, you really wanna make history? So let's go out and take a picture. Well, first I showed them the picture through the projector and I said, that's the same church. And they were amazed, I was impressed too. Let's go and make history. Let's take the picture. This is in 2018. So uh -huh. 1920, 1931 to uh -huh. 2018, a lot of years. And I was, I was standing where our founder stood. Mm. And I thought, this is not a baby step. This is a giant step for me. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And the legacy continues. Yeah, so for a young priest to, to have that, for a young sister as well, for a lay missioner, mm -hmm. for someone to stand, this is, think of your grandfathers, okay? Mm -hmm. Our forefathers stood and they were pioneers and then you're there. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm inheriting this legacy. And for me, it was, and it's still, it, it keeps me postponed. It's a beautiful moment where I, ha where I thought, wow, this is our renovation of our missionary commitment. This is where our founder stood and I'm here and, uh, this is a new decade for me, a, a new entry into mission. Right. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, we've had um, a Greg Dar, who is part of the vocation team, and he lived in Chicago for a while, and um, it's part of the National Religious uh, Vocation Conference, and mm -hmm. so uh, we always cross paths with him, whether in person or by Zoom or phone. And actually, Greg Dar was, Greg, if you're listening right now, <laughs> thank you for uh, sending R Father Rodrigo our way. But he, um, as a married person, has a different experience. And yet, he lives and is steeped in the charism of the Marinolers. And so it's really um, the vocation for the Marinolers is, as a missionary, um, could also be um, not just for brothers, but fathers, and also for lay missioners. Um, and, and this is international, is that right? Yes, so our Marinol family is comprised of the fathers and brothers, mm -hmm. lay missioners, the sisters, and the affiliates, mm -hmm. okay? So 
there is a vocation in Marinol for all people, for everyone, uh, even families. So I remember I did my novitiate in New York and there were families, two families with two kids preparing mm -hmm. to go to mission to Brazil mm -hmm. and to Bolivia. And uh, so I send blessings to my siblings, mm -hmm. my brother and sister, they have children and it's wonderful to be with them. Uh, so yes, uh, Marinol has uh, the, the blessing to have all of these expressions mm -hmm. of mission uh, where we invite people's gifts, okay, when we invite uh, people from different backgrounds, Catholic, to serve where they are needed but not wanted, right, as mm -hmm. uh, our bishop wrote. And so that enriches Marinol, and that enriches the people of God we serve, and we are enriched in many ways because we not only go to serve, mm -hmm. but to be served. I mean, it's a, a blessing to learn so much from the local people. Mm -hmm. It really is. I, I um, as um, someone with a missionary heart as well, um, and even before I joined my community right now, um, having served with the Redemptorist for two years as a layperson, and it became part of my discernment uh, into religious life. I think service and what, Father, uh, you've mentioned about um, people trying out a short mission mm -hmm. or any type of service. It, mm -hmm. it could be your parish. It could be um, uh, your, you know, your, your own neighborhood. Mm. Um, and I see young people doing that a lot. Um, there's so much love, there's so much gift, and there's so much, um, I, I guess, gifts that people want to share with one another, that that is what being a missionary is, being sent to the other. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of mission, I just wanted to, um, at this point, probably uh, move into some of the promotions um, mm -hmm. that you have. Uh, first, uh, before I, I turn it back to you, Father Rodrigo, uh, I just want to invite people on October the 13th uh, Mission OLA, which is the mission of Our Lady of the Angels, and their website is mission, M-I-S-S-I-O-N-O-L-A dot org. Again, that's missionola.org. October 13 is the Chicago Marathon, and um, people have been uh, training for that group. Uh, there are different teams that, uh, and I don't know if you remember that, um, having lived in, in Chicago before, wow. um, there, when, you, when, you ha when you have the marathon, you might be a marathon under yourself, <laughs> you know, if, if you're interested. They train for this, and then they raise funds, and so if people are interested in finding more about the Chicago Marathon, uh, in fact, I think October 14 is the first day to sign up for 2025 mm, um, wow. Chicago Marathon. But in the meantime, missionola.org is asking for your help um, in raising funds. And on the screen, you will see um, that this team has mm -hmm. really a strong spirit. Um, and Sister Stephanie Baliga is the one that kind of got me recruited into praying for this team and especially, um, I know this is not going to be fair because I'm, I'm going to be um, um, uh, mentioning me, at least just the first name of the person I'm praying for, Eduardo. Hi, Eduardo. If you're watching this, I'm praying for you and for all um, of the team. And, and the sisters um, who are um, running as well as organizing this theme. So I just wanted to kind of like give that shout out. And now back to you, Father Rodrigo. Do you have um, special events or things that you would like to promote at this time? Yes, I would like to promote our Come and See Retreat, which is next week, October 11th, 12th, and 13th. And this is an experience for someone who's 21 to 40 years old and wants to learn about the charism of Marinol, all right? Uh, we will be praying, we will be um, attending certain talks, and this will happen in our Chicago Formation House, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There will be adoration, evening prayer, morning prayer, time to hang out with our seminarians. I heard we're going bowling on all Friday, right. and uh, I think there's a burger place they chose. So the aura in La Vora you mm. mentioned, exposing our seminarians, uh, our prospects to the life of the seminarians, and also having conversations about uh, what's moving you. You mm -hmm. know, what are your deepest desires? What are you interested in 
doing with your life, right? Mm -hmm. so no strings attached. Mm -hmm. No strings attached. That's yeah. right. No yeah. It's an experience so that mm -hmm. you can at least know mm -hmm. what it's like. And so, uh, Father Rodrigo, how would they contact you or where would they find more information about this to sign up? Our um, website, marinolsociety.org. Very easy. Marinolsociety.org. And you go to that website, you click on vocations, and there will be a prompt uh, that says, write to Father Rodrigo, and that's me. And then you send me a message, hey, Father, I heard that in Dare to Love program you're promoting a come and see, tell me more. Bam, and I'll reply to you. Uh, if not, uh, my number, 914-260-6342. It's important to memorize that name. This is Mission Sunday. Uh, this is Mission Month, October. Mission Sunday happens this month. So mm -hmm. I invite you also to pray mm -hmm. uh, for, and you're looking at the screen exactly where you can write your information and press that blue button. Mission Sunday, pray for uh, missionaries, local and abroad. And if you want to be one of them, come and join us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know, uh, real quickly, Father Rodrigo, um, and maybe Father mm -hmm. Adam, you know this too, are there some missionary talks going on right now? Because uh, I know this was happening, I think, throughout the summer, but is this a particular month in which, I know collections are happening, mm -hmm. but are there also some missionary talks going on? Yeah, so World Mission Sunday, you know, is generally mm -hmm. held at the, the fourth Sunday of October, so that's worldwide. And then specifically for missionary communities like Mary Noel and the Divine Word, we celebrate in grand fashion. So we will have a grand Mission Sunday celebration at our Divine Word College Seminary near Dubuque, Iowa on Sunday, uh, the 20th of October. And also here locally at St. Joseph the Worker Parish in Wheeling, Illinois, where the Divine Word missionaries serve, we're enlisting our men in formation to come and help celebrate Mission Sunday at the parish. So the weekend of October 19th and 20th, you'll meet some of our seminarians at St. Joseph the Worker sharing their vocation stories, talking about mission and how all of us are called to be witnesses, as we said. And an insight we had during the break I want to make sure we share is that we are not just going to change the world when we mm. go on mission, but we are also being changed and transformed by the opportunity to learn from the people we serve and the way they will impact and touch our lives as well. Mm -hmm. And so Christ chooses us, we choose how we answer that call, and as we always talk about on this program with the theme Dare to Love, it really is a dare. You know, we wonder sometimes, is there enough love in this world to go around. If you don't feel there is, well, maybe it's up to us to be that love and contribute mm -hmm. that love to the world. So can we accept that dare of the gospel to lay our do lives down, to put both feet in, to be all in in answering the call in whatever path it is. So mm -hmm. thank you so much, Father Rodrigo, for enlightening us today with your wisdom. Your life certainly has been changed uh, on your journey, as we could hear. And through your sharing today, Sister Lavina and I mm -hmm. are very sure that those listening and watching today will also be changed and to continue responding to God's call in the ways that they are invited to do so. Yes, thank you so much um, for, for visiting us. Hopefully this is not the, the first time and the only time that you will come. Um, I think you would feel needed, both needed and wanted as well. Now, I just want to, with the, the last minute that we have, I just wanted to announce because this is being aired October 3rd. So being a Franciscan, I just, I mean, people already know that October 4th uh, is the Feast of St. Francis. And speaking of being a missionary, did you know he wanted to be a missionary? And he re his, his purpose was to probably become a martyr, but then oh. um, the balance needed to happen. And so he was advised by very wise people. And so um, he ended up really uh, becoming kind of the person that, that really um, is showing the incarnated love of God wherever you are. So in a way, he did achieve that wanting to be a missionary. He may not have been sent to China, like <laughs> you both, uh, you know, the Mary Knowles and the Society of Divine Word. However, the blessing of the pets is, has been going on. I think it's already started, uh, according to the Archdiocese uh, Facebook account. So um, we send you blessings, and um, I hope that um, those who are interested in joining Father Rodrigo will be able to reach him. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you so much.
sings of the love that I found in you. Faithful to be more like you. Here. 